My MOOF University YouTube videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. If you'd like to pay for the use of the videos, visit my website at moofuniversity.com, click on the pay-what-you-like link at the top of the page, and follow the instructions on that page. Thank you and enjoy. Since we talked about cornitine in the previous video, I'd like to provide you with a little clinical correlate in this video. So we mentioned the carnitine-mediated transport system of acyl-CoA's in the previous video and why that was important for specifically the pathway of beta oxidation. Now, there obviously can be deficiencies in the role players of that pathway. So, as we mentioned before, we had carnitine, we had CAT1, CAT2, and then the carnitine acyl carnitine translocase um, protein as well. Now, um, deficiencies in any of these can be a problem. Specifically, what what will happen or not happen is is the question of which, which pathways will be impaired. Well, we know that these are all involved in the carnitine mediated transport of the carnitine mediated transport of acyl coas from the cytosol to the mitochondrial matrix. So, if there are deficiencies in those role players that are involved in that process, what will happen? Well, the transport of acyl coas from the cytosol to the mitochondrial matrix will be impaired. In fact, it won't happen, right? So, if we're not getting acyl coas from the cytosol to the mitochondrial matrix, then beta oxidation cannot happen, right? Which is a problem. Why is that a problem? Well, let's talk specifically about a carnitine deficiency. Now, I'm not really certain about uh, these other guys. I know that because they're all enzymes or proteins that um, that are involved in this pathway or excuse me, this uh, transport system, they um, deficiencies in these guys right here because they're proteins. They are coded for by DNA, so. Uh, deficiencies can be due to genetics, right? So um, those are genetic diseases when you have deficiencies of those, and I think they're pretty rare. I'm not sure about the details of all of them, but um, in fact, even even a carnitine deficiency can be genetic. Uh, I'm not too sure about the causes of all these things, but um, I do want to mention a little bit about the consequence of a carnitine deficiency. If someone doesn't have carnitine, then then you can't form acyl carnitines. And if you can't form acyl carnitines, then you can't get acyl CoA's to the mitochondrial matrix where beta oxidation can happen. So, what's the consequence of that carnitine deficiency? Is that you can't utilize fatty acids for energy, right? You can't use these activated fatty acids for energy, and that's a really bad thing because um, fatty acids are a sort of long-term energy source. Um, whereas like something like free glucose uh, in our cell can be readily used um, immediately. Uh, glycogen is a short-term energy source as well. Um, but when we're fasting or if we're exercising for long periods of time, for instance if you take, um, you know, if you jog for a few miles, that's an extended period of time. Um, and if you're fasting, uh, which means if you're not eating, uh, your body is being fueled by fatty acids. So you cannot utilize fatty acids for energy during fasting or extended periods of exercise if you have a carnitine deficiency. Um, and that can cause a multitude of things, um, including muscle cramps, right, um, or muscle weakness, which can be pretty pretty severe. And this, it could even cause death if it if it affects the um, sorry, if it actually affects specifically the uh, muscle, kidney, and heart cells um, uh, mostly. And, I mean, those things uh, are pretty important, right? If those things are weak or not working, then that could result in death. So, uh, which is a symptom that's not really treatable, as you probably already know. So, the question is, how can carnitine deficiency be treated? Um, well, I read about it a little bit, and it's apparently a little bit complicated, but the simple answer, the simplest answer I can give is carnitine supplements. And that sounds pretty simple, right? If someone doesn't have carnitine, you just give them that carnitine, right? It's just an amino acid. Um, if you just give someone carnitine, 
then that should be work. That should work, right? And apparently that is the case. Uh, in but it, it it sounds simpler than it actually is, and I'm not really sure about all the details. But the idea simply is that if someone doesn't have carnitine, you give them carnitine, then they can start using these fatty acids for energy during their fasting periods or during exercise, and they won't have to worry about these um, symptoms. And um, apparently that is the case. People who have carnitine deficiencies are treated with carnitine supplements, and um, but that needs to be like highly monitored and regulated and like they need to be really careful about the way it happens. Uh, I'm not really sure about the details. I'm not a doctor. I'm, not, I'm by no means offering medical advice. Um, I'm just trying to pr approach this from an academic perspective. Um, another thing though is that some people use uh, carnitine supplements just as a dietary supplement, not, add, not as a, a sort of treatment for a deficiency. So um, the idea is that if someone has more carnitine, what could happen? Well, that could enhance transport of ACE-CoA's into the mitochondrial matrix. At least this is the reasoning. You can enhance the transport of ACE-CoA's into the mitochondrial matrix, which means that beta oxidation can happen more often. And um, it's marketed as a supplement that could help you um, increase your endurance and um, even help you lose weight. So uh, what's the reasoning behind that? What's the reason those things are, are offered or, or marketed in that way? Well, the idea is that if you have more acyl-CoA's coming into the mitochondrial matrix faster, beta oxidation can happen more often um, and for maybe for prolonged periods. So um, if you're jogging, right, and you have more, you're able to tap on fatty acids more and more and more, then perhaps your endurance can can be increased because of that. So that's that's the reasoning behind that, or at least you know the the, the short bit of reasoning behind that. And the reasoning behind uh, promoting weight loss is that well, I mean, fatty acids. Where do they come from? Well, they come from triacylglycerols, which are fats. And if you are constantly activating fatty acids, turning them into acyl CoA's, and getting those acyl CoA's into the mitochondria to be broken down via beta oxidation, then you're burning fat. And the, if this happens more via a carnitine supplement, then you could lose weight. That's the idea behind that. And from what I read, um, which was not too much, <laughs> to be honest, um, I don't know if there's like a sort of clear, clear cut, like definitely this works sort of thing. Um, there might be some evidence that, that suggests that it works, but it's, it's not clear that it's like uh, a proven thing, which is probably why I don't really hear too much about it in terms of like a, a weight loss supplement. But that's just a little tidbit of knowledge I figured I'd share. Thanks for watching.